Okay, so imagine this. You got 50,000 fans screaming and cheering your name. You have a chance to win the game, it's your turn to bat. You walk up to the plate, everybody's cheering for you. And then all of a sudden you get to the plate, everything just goes quiet. You're sitting there trying to figure it out why, and then it hits you. You took your glove to the plate instead of your bat. Okay, that might seem like a bit of an extreme example, but there are a lot of people who don't know about the equipment used in baseball. <coughs> Sorry. Today I'm going to talk to you about the equipment used batting, fielding, and even sitting on the bench in baseball. Alright, so batting is probably the thing everybody associates baseball with, right? Okay, so the first bat were made out of wood, like this. But when they first started, they were a lot different. Basically, the bat looked like this when you held it. There was no handle to it. The first baseball bats, and uh, an article by Diana Cantu, who's a PhD student in the study of STEM education, stated that these bats were a lot heavier and they're a lot harder to swing because there's no handle. And then in the 1970s, metal bats were introduced, and the first metal bat used in a college game was in 1974, and uh, shortly after that. They tried a bunch of different types of metals and all kinds of stuff, and they came up with titanium, but the problem with titanium was the ball bounced off the bat so fast that it was killing people. So they were like, okay, we got to change that. So then they came up with BESR, and BESR stuck around for a while, but then everybody else got too good, and then we started killing more people. So then, on January 1st, 2011, the NCAA invented new bats called BB cores. And BB core stands for Bat Ball Coefficient of Restitution. I don't know what that means either, but um, uh, Dr. Daniel A. Russell, who is a PhD student in uh, acoustics, basically summed it up like this. BESR, the ball bounces off the bat like a trampoline. So that's why people were dying, because the ball is coming off so fast. BB core basically absorbs all the energy of the ball, so you just get a, nothing happens. So, when they changed the bats, it essentially changed the game. Who all watched the College World Series this year? See, I mean, what was the big problem with all those games? Couldn't hit home runs, right? These teams that were down by two runs, one run, they couldn't come back because they couldn't hit the ball over the fence. And now, probably the most important part of batting is the helmet. Now, helmets are really weird because baseball has been played since the early 1800s but no one thought about using a helmet until 1941. Even after a guy died in the 1920s, they were like, nah, we don't need them, no big deal. And they just decided to wear them in 1941 because some of their players had head injuries. In 1971, they were actually made mandatory by all Major League Baseball. And the first helmets were just like baseball hats, but they just had a hard line around them. Uh, today, helmets are a lot different. They can take up to a 100 mile an hour fastball, it's good to have on your head if you're playing in the majors. So that's probably one of the most important parts of batting. But then comes the batting gloves. Now, a lot of people don't like batting gloves. They're like, oh, you're a little girl if you use batting gloves. Now, there's a lot of reasons to use batting gloves. Um, makes your hands feel a lot better. I mean, they look cool. I'm kind of red and black. Just can't get better than that, right? Uh, but actually, batting gloves weren't used until the 19. Sorry about that. Um, they were not used until 1964, and they became common in the 1970s. So they haven't really been around that long. Uh, next, I want to talk to you about fielding. And everyone knows what this is. It's baseball glove. They actually played like 50 years of baseball without a glove. And finally, somebody's like, you know what? I'm tired of my hand feeling like it's going to fall off. So this guy, by the name of Charles Waite, used uh, basically the glove as close to the color of his skin as he could get. And it was just a piece of leather that covered his hand. He played first base. And a guy by the name of A.G. Spaulding started talking to him about it. And uh, he became really interested because he was a pitcher. And he was getting tired of having to catch the ball from the catcher every time, you know, and it basically killing his hand. And so he was really the first developer of a glove. Um, the next probably most important part about fielding is spikes. Now, uh, baseball spikes are a lot different than any other kind of sports shoe because got little metal things on the bottom of them. 
And if you've ever been slid into by these things, they hurt really bad. And spikes were introduced in the 1860s, but the only colors they had were black and brown. So basically just like a shoe you have today. But in 1964, the, Kansas, the Brooklyn Dodgers, sorry, were the first team to wear colored shoes, and they were white. Um, next most, most important part of fielding, some of you probably laughed at this, are your sunglasses. Uh, if you've ever tried to catch a ball in the outfield looking straight up at the sun, there's a lot of reasons you don't want to do that. <laughs> um, it's really scary for one, and it's really bad for your eyes. Uh, Alright, the next thing I want to talk to you about would be sitting on the bench. Now, as you know, there's a lot of downtime in baseball. It's nine innings, you basically do one thing per 30 minutes. So you gotta have something to keep yourself entertained. Uh, for us high school kids where tobacco is illegal, seeds are the best alternative. Uh, in the majors though, you'll find a lot of dip and gum and all, all kinds of other stuff we probably don't know about. But uh, it's, There's a lot of downtime, so you gotta find a way to entertain yourself all the time. Uh, the next most important thing is your headphones and your iPod. Like, Baseball is a really mental game, so you really got to get in the zone before you go up to the plate or you go out on the field. So, it, you know, they tell you not to bring that kind of stuff in the dugout, but as long as you got the hoodie on, you know, you're sitting over there, not talking to anybody in the zone, it's all good. Nobody's going to notice. Uh, the next part would be your uniform. I actually didn't have a uniform, but uh, a baseball hat. A lot of people, you know, wear their baseball hats just because it looks cool, but baseball players, I mean, it's part of the uniform. The hat doesn't look good. I mean, the rest of the uniform is just shot. So, um, <laughs> something else a little different. Like in football, they'll wear girdles. I guess yeah. You put your pads and stuff in them. Well, it looked kind of funny if we wore pads in baseball. So we have these things called sliding shorts, and you basically wear these because it hurts to slide on gravel and uh, dirt. <laughs> so, yeah, that's really everything involved in baseball equipment. And uh, I hope after today you have a better understanding of everything. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks.